This is an unlearning process. I mean, I mean, Watson and Crick, you know, telling people that g- genes are that s- genes are a library of possibilities. So we express one and a half percent of our DNA. The other ninety-eight and a half percent is called junk DNA, and and that one and a half percent. That's 23,688 genes we express. We have 140,000 proteins that make up the physical body. How could you have more proteins than genes? It should be one to one. Because on one gene, you can have thousands of variations depending on the signal. So I hypothesize that that other 98.5% has to be signaled by electromagnetism. That the receptor sites on the outside of the cells are, are hundreds of times more sensitive to energy or electromagnetism than the art of chemistry. Chemistry is a downward causation. So imagine the person elevating their energetic state. Well, they are going to literally select and instruct new genes. And, and those genes may, may be the ones that create more significant and faster changes in the body. I mean, how do you explain a person in one meditation that's blind that comes out as now seen? Like, what happened there? What about the stroke patient who, who, who was paralyzed for years is now moving a limb? I mean, that's, it's, it, it's, it's not matter that emits a field. That's an illusion. It's the field that creates matter. So then the fundamental question is, if you change the field... Will you change matter? It's none of your business to change the tumor. <laughs> that's, the, that's the outcropping, that's the outpicturing of changing the pattern in the field. So getting people really good at this, and the closer they can connect to that unified field, the more they are, their consciousness is connected to that consciousness, the shorter amount of time it'll take. I believe I'm an eternal being. I believe I'm eternal. And in fact, all religions that you study always talk about e- you're, you're going to be around for eternity, whether it's heaven or hell, mm-hmm. whether it's karma or whatever, nirvana, you are going, consciousness is going to exist. So you're going to be stuck with yourself for a very long time, <laughs> which then asks, begs the question, well, if I'm waking up now and it's 2019 and I have this healthy body and this charisma and I'm successful, my goodness, I'm going to use the same passion the life that I've created with those great habits. And I'm going to turn it inward. And I'm going to bloom like a flower in a new way. Because, hey, someone did it at 33 years old. You're 38. Mm-hmm. So what? There are people in this, in this group that we're about ready to go that are in their 80s. And they could be home watching Wheel of Fortune. And they're all in. And you can't tell me you're too old. To do this work, we have people in their 80s and uh, a few in their 90s. I've seen their brain scans and they know how to do it. And you know what? They're happy. You can't, you can't tell me you're too sick to do this work any longer. We have really, really sick people that have reversed very serious health conditions and even genetic disorders that there were no solutions for in medical science. And there were days that they doubted themselves. And there were days that they didn't feel like doing their meditations. And there were days they were in so much fear because the doctors told them they were stupid and they were going to die. And there were days they could have excused themselves and said, I have too much going on, I'm too busy. And they could have excused themselves and not done the work. But guess what? They did it anyway. They overcame the conditions in their environment. They overcame their beliefs. They overcame those programs, the conditioning. They overcame their body. They overcame their fear. Their their love for life started to become greater than their fear of death. That's just because they made the effort to turn the battleship around. And, And you can't even tell me that you're too overweight or too underweight or too out of shape. I've seen it on all shapes and sizes. You can't even tell me that, you, that you're, you never meditated before. In fact, many times people who have never meditated before have the most profound readings because they're not trying to do anything or expect to do anything or doing it their way. They're just following what, what you tell them to do and in their innocence, they run right into something really big. So, so, so what? At 38 years old, practicing this, you could say that my new goal is to live for 150 years in a body that's 38 or 48. And we're measuring telomeres. We have people, many people, 
Their biological age is way different than their chronological age. They don't care that they're 38. Their body tells them they're 28. And, and why? Because they're working with down-regulating genes for disease and up-regulating genes for health every day. Why? Because they understand that they can. And if you don't understand that you can and you're ignorant, then it doesn't work. So then, so then people who actually say, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to become, I'm going to become the scientist with my life. I'm going to measure the effects of me at cost. That's how I live. I say, all right, I'm going to change my energy. I, I can tell you nobody changes. In all the years I've been doing this, nobody changes until they change their energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life. And why not every day instead of getting up and searching for your cell phone? 86% of the people that have a smartphone, the first thing they do when they wake up is they do their WhatsApp, their text, their Facebook. They take a picture of their feet. They post it on Facebook. Then they do their Instagram, you know, take a picture of their cat, you know, and then they link in and they check one email, the other email, they check the news. And now they're... They're, they're, they're attention on and everything known in their life. They reaffirm their identity. And then they go through all those routine behaviors. 95% of them, they're not even present and conscious. of. There's just a group of them. Or they're, they're remembering their problems in their past. That's how they start their day. And, and don't expect anything in your life to change if your environment is controlling your feelings and thoughts. And if your environment is controlling how you feel and think, and I say to you, Aubrey, why are you so upset today? Oh, well, this person is upsetting me. What you're really saying is that person is controlling your feelings and your thoughts, and that means you're a victim to your environment. So to turn that around and you start realizing your feelings and thoughts create your environment, <laughs> and you start seeing the effects of you at cause, you're going to react less to the people in your life because you're going to understand that you'll be back to the victim consciousness. And, and when you start seeing that you're creating outcomes in your life, you're going to believe more that you're the creator of your life and less the victim of your life. And I say, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. It's a movement now. I mean, I'm waking up in my dream. I, I, I honestly, Aubrey, never thought that I would witness what I'm witnessing in this lifetime and there is a new consciousness emerging there's something happening where people are latching on to their own empowerment latching on to their own unlimitedness and it's becoming very contagious so the person you know i i used to golf a lot with my friends and i i used to say to them i mean i'm a decent golfer but i'd say to them i'm just not good enough to get upset just, I'm really not, but I'm going to have a lot of fun mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to play. And the more fun I have, the better I play. I watch, you know, you, you duff a shot and then you start getting angry and frustrated. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's your game is going to, you're going to, you're going to make the same mistake on the next swing because your emotion is keeping you in your past. Mm -hmm. So you got to make a choice to self-regulate or not. And the ones that get right back on that have ice water in their veins that can settle down and refocus again. Yeah, those are the ones that execute really well. So the person who can't get beyond themselves is just a matter of practicing. How many balls do you have to hit? How many punches do you have to throw? How many kicks do you have to throw? Till all of a sudden you start looking forward to doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I can tell you this because I've been doing it for a very long time. Some days are easier than others. But I'm not going to give up. I'm just not. I mean, if I'm going to carve out some time, then I'm all in. I'm not, I'm not going to shut my cell phone off. I'm going to can disconnect from it. It's all going to be there when I get back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my inner world more real than my outer world. And step by step, I mean, you can't get impatient doing this. You can't get frustrated doing this. You can't get resentful doing this. You can't force it or control it doing it. I've seen what happens in the brain. You're going to make your brain worse. So sooner or later, you start figuring out that isn't it. And all of a sudden, you start following the instructions. And you start going, wow, that was really easy. What was I doing up to this point? Everything but the formula. You were doing everything else but the formula. Doing it your way, mm -hmm. analytical mind telling you to quit. It's too hard. You'll never get it. Yeah, those are the exact things that are standing in the way between you and your future. And every time you become conscious that you do that and you settle back down, that's a victory.
Every time your body wants to get up and check an email or check the cell phone or check, get up and get a cup of coffee and you settle it down, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. Every time it wants to go back to the past and romance some trauma just to reaffirm some emotional state and you become conscious of that and you say where I place my attention is where I place my energy and I'm siphoning energy out of the present moment into the past and you become conscious of it and return back to the present moment, that's a victory. And every time you start thinking about the staff meeting at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and that's the known and you stop and you return back to the present moment, you're disinvesting your attention and energy out of that future and you're making room for the unknown in your life and that's a victory. And when your will gets greater than the program because most people lose their free will to programs because they are, they are on that wheel where they are, you could take their yesterday and lift it up and set it on their tomorrow because they're in the habit of doing everything in a routine way. So then when they lose their free will to a program and their body, which is a habit, has become the mind, now their body's dragging them into a predictable future. And they've lost their free will to a program. And you sit down and you, your body is telling you, I'm going to die in this meditation. I'm going to suffocate. This is going to end. I can't. And you just keep settling it back down. Every time you do that, it's a victory. 